Hi everyone, the big 1.0 launch of Last Epoch is coming up on February 21st. A much anticipated new RPG, well, it has been in early access for a while and I've played it way back, but this is the big hype moment right now, everyone wants to play this game. And I have also been preparing for this launch quite a bit. In fact, I've been able to play patch 1.0, the launch version of the game early. I had been invited to the closed beta test program as a content creator, uh, pretty last minute to be fair, but I did have the opportunity to also play it a little bit uh, on my own, basically trying out the new Falconer class. And uh, just, I want to give you my general impressions of patch 1.0 compared to the previous patches. And also I want to show you my build that I have very crafted for patch 1.0. I want to be racing on hardcore with this build, the new Falconer. It's super fun. I can really only recommend this class and this master in particular. They have done a phenomenal job making lots of really fun, viable builds there. So I want to talk about those and show you what we have. I also want to mention that this video is sponsored by EHG 11th Hour Games, the creators of Last Epoch. I have been putting out a bunch of other videos already and been blasting the game for you know, over a week now, every day, trying to practice speedrunning and so on. Uh, even without that, so it's a really great game, I think, um, you know, outside of the hashtag sponsored. But of course, I want to thank them very much for the opportunity for having me in the beta test and for sponsoring this video. If you have played the game before already, then you probably want to read through the patch notes. They are very, very, very long. Uh, so there's like 50 pages or something of patch notes here uh, with lots of changes they have made to the game. But not just balance updates, they have actually also changed some of the game's systems. For example, they are these weather effects in monoliths now they've updated graphics across the board with like new like shadow and lighting effects and everything like looks a lot better now and they've also like improved for example loading times service ability lots of lots of little things that you know might be a bit unsuspecting but overall i gotta say that compared to the live version of the game it does look and feel a lot better they've also made for example classes and skills a bit more responsive a, you know, a bit more like uh, like stuff actually just feels more natural now, basically. And they've updated monster types. And you can definitely see that in every part of the game. The first time I played Last Epoch was something like maybe three years ago or so. And uh, it has definitely come a long way since then. I've been jumping into Last Epoch here and there, trying out various patches ever since I think like you know, 0.7 or 0.6 or something. And, uh, you know, I've been seeing some various stages of the game cycle and now we are in patch 1.0 and, well, it doesn't stop here. So this is an ARPG. It has these seasonal cycles. They're literally called cycles, in fact, in this game. And, of course, they are going to continuously work on all these kind of systems to improve them further and further. At least that's what the developers have said. So... I think they have a really bright future ahead of them. The base of the game is amazing with this monolith system, the crafting system. I've explained these things in dedicated videos. I have to link in the description if you want to learn more. But in a grand scheme of things, for the price on Steam, you can get the game very cheap and you can easily get your money's worth out of it. At this point, I also want to highlight real quick that Maxwell has the last Epoch branch. So in case you don't know about this, you're completely new to the game, then you might want to check this out. There are tons of build guides here, resources as well. We have the tier lists. Um, so everything is here with uh, build guides. You can open each of each and every one of them here with full uh, embeds for, you know, the equipment, the uh, skills, the skill trees. So these are the individual skills here that have each of their own tree, for example and uh, everything that you could ever look for basically so if you are looking for any kind of help in terms of uh, you know learning the game then maxwell is your resource and we have a great dedicated team here so these are our guys that have been blasting last epoch for a long time and uh, they have basically built most of this <laughs> website all of these guides like everything is done by them for the most part i'm not one of the last epoch writers here but i have been collaborating with them to also bring you some build guides and like this you should be able to jump into the game but even without build guides even without uh, looking at anything i think the game is quite accessible even for newcomers so when you are uh, starting out in last epoch 
Uh, most of the tooltips are very detailed, or you can, for example, hold down Alt or even Alt Control. There are like some, some key combos that are also shown in the game uh, where you can get more information about how everything works. Right now, I can't show it to you actually because the servers are down for updating for the launch patch, so I can't go into the game to show you. <laughs> but the details are there in all of the tooltips. There's an in-game uh, guide, an in-game like wiki, basically, explaining you how certain mechanics work in the game. And overall, yeah, you can very easily make your own builds work as well. The game is uh, very open to experimentation, which is one thing I really like about it. And uh, you don't really have anything to worry about, you know, being a complete noob. Now, so much for the game's general impressions. I'm very excited for the launch. Let's get into my actual build. So this is the one that you're seeing here in this footage that I have recorded from the test client for 1.0. This is going to be a Blast Rain Falconer build. So what this does is that as a falconer, which is like a, one of the rogue masteries, uh, I have uh, this falcon companion and it can use a bunch of skills that are really impactful. Falconer seems to be one of the hype classes right now. There are a bunch of builds as well here on Maxwell that uh, we have, uh, for example, on the tier list, uh, if you look at this here. And uh, it seems like I kind of created something that's a bit different from uh, some of the others here, at least um, like briefly looking over those made by our Maxwell guys. I just peer across my own thing and I'm quite happy with the result. So the basic idea here is that uh, we use Dive Bomb and the Falconry, um, the Falcon Strikes skills uh, to deal most of the damage against um, basically AOE targets most of the time. And we also have a really big burst damage here, as you can see, against bosses. Now, this is not like really high end difficulty yet or something. I'm just like level 74 in this clip. But you can see it can definitely melt stuff really fast with this. And it has really high mobility. I built it fairly tanky because I want to be playing on hardcore. And I also have um, this super high mobility and can actually attack enemies while just passively walking by. So, in typical monolith runs, I basically just always move forward to this aerial assault as my number three, this is a traversal skill. And you can see that the cooldown recovers extremely quickly on this ability, thanks to some of the points on the skill tree. So you can constantly just jump forward, you know, further and further throughout the monolith, and uh, then use your dive bomb, which is the number four here. This is like a big impact explosion, basically exploding an entire pack or like a big rare monster or something. Or the number two, the Falcon Strikes, which is like the base ability of the Falcon uh, as you move forward. So like this, you always have something going on basically because all those cooldowns can recover extremely quickly uh, due to some of the extra cooldown recovery effects on the skill trees. And uh, I never really have to attack much myself. But I do call it Blast Rain because this is going to be uh, basically my main attack, my standard attack that is just like spam, which is like this bow attack here that you see. I shoot up in the air. It feels a bit like Toxic Rain from like Path of Exile, for example. So uh, you just you know shoot up those arrows and then come down and explode. And uh, this actually also gives you some of those um, extra procs, uh, extra damage for your Falcon and can help you resetting your cooldowns as well. So basically, as I'm jumping forward and running forward, I just shoot those blast rain here and there. And then I have my Falcon coming down and decimating the packs with the dive bomb and the Falcon strikes. And as a last skill here, I have the smoke bomb. You can see this on number one which is just uh, really the powerful of, like, offensive buff and like defensive tool, especially for hardcore. I really like it because you can get um, lots of like damage avoidance, for example. You can give armor shred and a bunch of other debuffs that it can uh, just uh, trigger like that. But it's ultimately like a flex skill that you can also swap out for anything else. I've been uh, trying to, like, for example, include ballistas in there as well for a bit of more damage output. Or, you know, you can do something like a decoy or, you know, a bunch of other choices. I also made this last Epoch Planner here. I have this linked in the description. I also made some loot filters for this setup because I've been trying to min-max my um, loot filter a little bit uh, for the race. So this is like uh, very much uh, geared towards racing on hardcore. So keep that in mind. As I mentioned, I've built it kind of tanky because it's a rogue and it's not really that easy to get very tanky on a rogue. But on a Falcon, no, there are definitely some pretty useful uh, passive tier nodes here. And also with the skill that we uh, with the skills that we use here with the smoke bomb, for example, we can be relatively tanky. Now, of course, this might be a bit of a work in progress because 
I have not actually like gone all the way to level 100 or close to that with the setup. So I have like a relatively basic planner here, just like, you know, yellow items. I didn't put like anything super crazy in there. This is just like some stuff to shoot for. And then you can, you know, build on that as you go, basically. It's also worth mentioning that I will not be leveling up with this exact setup from the start. In fact, I will be playing a Shadow Daggers, um, like Blade Dancer type build. However, you have to play it as a Falconer, not as a Blade Dancer, because you can't change your mastery. But I've talked about this in another video, talking about my uh, starting build, basically, and my practice runs for um, the launch. So that is actually uh, here, the Blade Dancer leveling guide uh, made by Tarek. So in f basically, I'm following this Blade Dancer guide plus minus, but as a Falconer instead. So I have to choose a bit of like different um, talents. But uh, yeah, TLDR, we use Shadow Daggers with Umbro Blades. You throw those spinning blades on the ground. Uh, I've, as I mentioned, I've detailed this in uh, the other uh, guide as well already. But um, just instead of one of these like supporting skills, for example, Shadow Cascade or Smoke Bomb or something, we're going to have to Falcon instead. And at least through the campaign, I think this is going to be a very good choice, just like rushing forward, being really fast. I guess you could play this setup that I'm describing here, my main build from the start, but it's just going to feel clunky that, you know, you're going to have to do a bit of respecking anyway, because you can't really unlock all of the synergies until later. You need multiple skills uh, specialized already so that you can get those synergies online. And uh, you also, you know, if you have like explosive trap relatively late and it also needs a bunch of extra points uh, to get the blast train in the first place. Uh, so, yeah, I wouldn't really recommend starting this from level one, basically. So one thing you can do is just go on Max Soul or check out the, the links here in the description and then you can just play this Falconer leveling guide. In fact, it actually has a bunch of these like, you know, similar skills, as you can see, or this Blade Dancer one. So I'll be doing kind of this, but as a Falconer, as I mentioned, or you do this. But to explain the main combos here, as I had already described uh, earlier with the gameplay footage, basically we are shooting our arrows and we're buffing our Falcon as much as possible. So Falconry has a bunch of really powerful nodes here. Uh, first of all, you can just get like passive damage buffs. For example, you want to stack a lot of dexterity for your Falcon because of Falconer's journey here. So with every level and with every point of dex, it gets a multiplier. That's really powerful. And you can also share your stats to your Falcon. So we have this down here. So uh, it gets uh, part of your um, you know, increased bow damage and we're wearing a bow here. So we're trying to stack a bit of bow damage and this goes to your Falcon as extra minion damage basically. Then we also have uh, the same for the crit. So you can actually convert your crit to Falcon crit and you can do the same for the crit multi. So late game at least, you're going to try uh, specking into crit multiplier, crit chance and try to reach like basically 100% crit chance. And then this Falcon will go absolutely crazy. And then there are more buffs here that we unlock. So we use the Explosive Trap, which, uh, well, we convert to the Blast Train. This is this node here. So instead of throwing traps, you're going to shoot them with a bow. And uh, then we can use Sky Signal. And Sky Signal gives your uh, Falcon a huge amount of uh, physical penetration. So this uh, basically mega buffs your Falcon because there's not really many good ways of adding extra pen to your pet. And like this, you can stack up easily 20, 30 plus stacks or something of this penetration effect and massively buff your Falcon. And on top of this, the more you shoot and especially late game, there's also this Falconer's Mark where you can also share your added damage from your bow to your Falcon. And this can actually stack up up to 10 times. So in the planner right now, I have only one point in there. But the intention here is uh, I can't put it in the planner yet because the stats are not there. But uh, you're going to try to get uh, plus falconry ranks somewhere. Uh, I think that's kind of go in the chest. And then you can like fill out this marking strikes. You can fill out the avian arsenal. And then you can kind of share, you know, your increased damage, your crit, your crit multi, and your added damage. Basically all of your important stats to your falcon. And all of that applies to those falcon abilities like the dive bomb and uh, the um, falcon strikes. And like this, you're going to absolutely decimate for that bird. As for the rest of the setup, we mostly just stack up as much damage as possible and as much uh, cooldown recovery effects as possible. So this is kind of like a theme for the Falconer in general. There's a lot of extra cooldown recovery. So you can see this here for the dive bomb, for example. There's extra cooldown recovery speed. 
there's also like whenever you uh, attack and hit an enemy, you can recover part of the remaining cooldown. So you can actually like actively reset, for example, dive bomb here by just shooting with a blast drain. And uh, like this, we also enable, uh, for example, uh, specking into devastating dive where the cooldown increases. But because we actually reduce the cooldown, it's not really such a big problem. And it's like a ma that massive damage modifier. Same thing here, we also reduce the delay. It just makes this build a lot smoother to play. There's also here uh, the Rapid Pursuit, where you can also reset your uh, Traversal skill cooldown, like the Aerial Assault here, for example. So this is how that actually gets uh, recovered really quickly as well. So it's kind of like a dynamic of you jumping around with Aerial Assault, and then using a Dive Bomb, and then you jump again, and then you use the Dive Bomb, or then the Falcon Strikes, and so on. The dive bomb actually costs very little mana, but in general, this build is relatively mana hungry. So this is like actually one thing that we invest heavily into. You can see this here. We have mana regen, basically where we can. Uh, this is really useful to make the build a lot more smooth. You can get away with a bit less mana early on, but ultimately you want to try to invest a lot into mana. So you can also see this here in the uh, explosive trap setup. Uh, there is actually this minus 40% mana cost node here. And uh, there's also this extra mana efficiency node, and I picked up all of these. You can probably min-max this a little bit in the late game when you really have too much mana. So there are definitely, you know, ways to solve this, and you're going to be fine at some point. And you can use those points for some other things as well. But going more in depth about the cooldown recovery, we can also see this here in the falconry tree, for example, with the side-by-side -side nodes. So there's uh, kind of the same story as with the dive bomb. Whenever you attack with your bow attack, you reduce the Falcon Strikes cooldown, so I can use it very frequently. And again, this is kind of like a mana hungry uh, skill here, it costs 48, for example. So you want to make sure that you have enough mana for this. And then here's the area of sword that actually helps us a little bit. We have uh, this node here, Repressing Resolve, recovers a part of your missing mana. So the lower mana you are, the more you get. It's kind of nice. And uh, again, also here, uh, so whenever your uh, Falcon hits an enemy, you get Part of the cooldown reset for area assault so you see where this is going basically and like this you kind of like fly around and you can like immediately use your dive bomb you can use your falcon strikes they're actually instant cast skills uh, due to some of the passives here that we have on the falcon tree uh, it's uh, this one the intuitive connection so this is something you spec into as soon as possible and then you don't actually have an animation or even like a cast time at all for falcon strikes and dive bomb and you can actually cast them while running and you can just, you know, mouse over somewhere and your Falcon will decimate. Lastly, we have this smoke bomb here. As I mentioned, this can be changed to something else. This is absolutely not required in a setup, but I really like the smoke bomb. So uh, I have a few things here, like the slow stacks. We have the armor shred. So there's not really such an easy way to get armor shred outside of like rolling it on the items. So I picked this up and also the armor shot in a slow frequency. So you just drop down a smoke bomb, you can actually shoot it with your bow with this node here, and then you can target it wherever you want on the enemy, for example. So it's kind of nice to just get this armor shred up. And also we have uh, the silver shroud. So silver shroud is you walk into the smoke bomb and then you dodge the next attack and get a bunch of ward. So this is like a nice defensive tool here. You can also cleanse all the elements in case you have like, you know, burn, ignite, whatever on you. And uh, also we have a bunch of extra base crit here. So this is also going to apply to your Falcon then. And like this, we have like a really nice package. There's also like here more dust shrouds and uh, you can get a bit of extra defenses here. So I just really like having the smoke bomb in there as a defensive tool. As for the passive tree, it is relatively straightforward. We go with exactly 20 points in Rogue, which is like the minimum to unlock the uh, mastery trees. But uh, basically, you try to, try to pick up Dexterity. As I mentioned, this is like a very powerful modifier. You actually roll this on a bunch of your gear as well, uh, if you can. And then we pick up uh, Evasion here. So Evasion is just like lots of extra damage reduction while moving. You're going to be moving pretty much all the time. We pick up a bunch of uh, Glancing Blow Chance here. And like this, we have just like, you know, really nice uh, defense. Uh, we do go into Falconer after that. So here we pick up uh, stuff like Raptor's Wings to get haste all the time when you or your falcon uh, hits enemies uh, we have a bunch of extra minion damage minion crit uh, flat damage here uh, then we have uh, stuff like ranges mark just like one point you can get a little buff for your pet 
Uh, later on as well, I'll start investing into this extra endurance threshold. This is, as I mentioned, a hardcore build. So I really like this. It's taking a lot of life here. Uh, you can get a really high life value. It turns out I have 4,000 in this setup. Uh, and uh, of course, you're going to have an insane amount of endurance in that case. You have an 800 endurance threshold. And we invest a little bit into um, the endurance uh, damage reduction. So this is really valuable. And then up here we have like extra armor and uh, dex and dodge. And then here also armor per dex is incredibly powerful. We have extra minion damage again. And here's like the crit multi and crit chance. And then this node here at the end. That is kind of interesting where you get a bunch of crit avoidance. And then it also allows you to scale your minion crit multi with your own crit avoidance. Crit avoidance is usually a stat you want to try to cap out, you know, somewhere maybe in the early empowered monoliths or so at the latest especially on hardcore you probably want to do it early and we get a good chunk here already there's also a blessing for it that allows you to stack a lot or you just roll on a bunch of your items and this actually gives us an offensive benefit as well so as soon as you have this which is going to be probably somewhere around like level 60 70 or so uh, you probably want to start investing more and more into crit and as i mentioned we share all of those crit stats to the falcon so this is going to be a pretty interesting setup and lastly, there's other stuff here like the Tailwind. So you get extra speed, extra dodge, etc. Damage taken reduction and a few other small things that we pick up. Especially this Coordinated Fate here is something I really like on the Falconer tree as well. It gives you another source of Silver Shrouds and uh, Silver Shrouds, in case you don't know, they give you a 100% guaranteed dodge on the next uh, hit that would otherwise hit you. And you can actually choose which skill to put here. Uh, so Basically, you want to invest one point and then it says that your leftmost ability when you press it can give you a silver shroud once every 10 seconds. So in my case, I put the dive bomb there. You could also put Falconry, but I felt like dive bomb has like this, you know, kind of like, yeah, I use it like once every five or so seconds. So every second time or so I get this trigger. And finally, on the passive tree, uh, we go into the marksman tree. It was like a really late game, but he has like a bunch of extra nice uh damage effects that we can stack up so first of all a bunch of flat damage and a bunch of crit and crit vulnerability so i'm not really sure if crit vulnerability is that important i might actually take out a few of these points and put them up here for the extra attack speed and the health gain so this might make it look a bit more smooth if you want, like care more about mapping and less about bossing i guess but ultimately here we also have this extra crit avoidance that i just talked about and extra crit multi and again this goes to the falcon as well and then you know gonna be like level 90 something or so at this point and I just have like some left all points that I put up here for an extra dex and glancing blow. Now for the gear real quick, I mentioned a few points already, like the mana re regeneration and lots of dexterity. There's also some new base types that uh, ESG has added in this patch. For example, this falconry helm and this falconry chest. They give you exactly the stats you need. This extra flat damage, the extra dexterity, a bunch of armor. So we get a bunch of extra damage reduction here. They have really good bases. Most importantly, you just try to stack a lot of like, you know, life and uh, resistances so you try to stack this way you can and then as i mentioned mana and the rest goes to like crit and uh like crit damage minion damage so you see this here for example our bow looks like this uh, you want to have exactly the dread form bow base which has a bunch of base crit and really high crit multi and then you can also roll extra base crit here and it's just like a really nice package yeah to buff your falcon uh, for equal, you want to have this base here and then also roll extra crit and flat damage. Uh, you want to have like, you know, crit and crit multi here. So you just try to stack these things up where you can, at least in a late game. I think early on, when you're like uh, still leveling up up to like 70, 80 or so, you can kind of get away without really stacking much crit before you're in empowered monoliths at least. And maybe later on you can stack more of these. And before that, just go more for just regular like you know bow damage or minion damage increases because they will directly apply to a falcon and you don't have to have this you know like kind of rng when you still have low crit chance so once you have like near 100 percent crit chance this really pops off but before that it's totally fine and still does a lot of damage and that also wraps up this video here i hope you enjoyed this again i was gonna say a big thank you to 11th hour games for sponsoring this video and I hope that you're going to have a great time in Last Epoch. I'll be streaming the game. I'm planning a 24 hour plus live stream for the race for Hardcore Level 100 uh, on launch. So be there and it's going to be a really good time, I think. So if you want to see me playing this build live on stream, come check it out.
Otherwise, I'll cover you here on YouTube as well. So, hope you liked this video and I'll see you guys next time.